All right, first thing you guys are going to do, okay, make sure, and a lot of you guys have already done this, but make sure that you put your uh, name and class period on this. Some of these have labels on them. Some of them do not. Um, if they have a label, you're more than welcome to use it. If there's not a label, you can just write anywhere on the back, but just make sure you put your name and your class period on there, okay? So flip it over to the actual canvas side, okay? So flip it over to the actual canvas size. And I want you guys to put your canvas so that it's horizontal. So it means that it is um, uh, wider than it is tall, okay? So when you do this, I want you guys to, we're going to mark um, the midway point for this. So if you guys look, I've already done this on here. The canvas is 8 by 10. So if you guys put your ruler over here on the side, and I'm going to kind of zoom into this so you guys can see this a little bit better. Not too much. Okay, so it's eight inches tall. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to just take a regular pencil and I want you to mark where the four inch mark is right there on your ruler, okay, on the canvas. Okay, and I want you to do it on the other side too. So again, mark where the midpoint is, which is four inches. Okay, I'll put this kind of on the other side so you guys can see. All right, so you're going to mark four inch mark. We just want to figure out where the middle of the canvas is, okay? And then what I want you guys to do, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, draw the edge for our construction paper. But first, you guys need to make sure that you're set up to the still life. So what you want to do, and I'll come around to each table, and I'll help you guys get set up because some of you guys are going to be kind of moving around your table a little bit. I had, I had to kind of move the still life so that the cash shadow would be either to the left or to the right of it, of the apple. So that required me to kind of move some of your guys' seats a little bit. So I'll come around, I'll get you guys set up, and then we'll draw the construction paper line on there. All right, so now that all of you guys are set up in your sort of painting seats, okay, you should see that your apple is going to look like it's either on the left side or the right side, okay? So whatever side your apple is on, so for me, my apple, it's sitting in front of me on my desk right now, is off to the, it's on the right side. So my apple is going to be over here somewhere. So when I draw this construction paper line, I want the, I'm going to have, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to draw this construction paper line straight across the board like a horizontal line, but I'm going to actually draw it at an angle so that one side is higher than the other. The high side is going to be where my apple is. So since my apple is on the right side, I'm going to draw this line so that, again, it's high on the right side on my canvas. And I want this line to be above this midpoint. So I'm not going to draw this here. I'm going to draw it above the line, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'll just go ahead and draw this. And again, mine needs to be high on the right side because that's where my apple is. And I'm just going to draw just like that. So you can see where my midpoint is. I want to draw that line, that construction paper line above it. So I want everybody to do right now, look at which side your apple's on. Is it on the left or the right? If your apple is on the left, you're going to make your high side on your construction paper on the left side. If your apple is on the right side of your canvas, you're going to make the high side of your construction paper on the right. And I'm actually going to lift this line up a little bit. I want to make it higher. I'm going to do this again. If you don't like where your line is the first time you draw it, you can erase it and just draw it again. So I'm going to like that better. I made mine a little bit higher. You just want to make sure that your line is at an angle as far as how much of an angle it is. That's up to you to decide. Um, I wouldn't make it too extreme. But then again, I wouldn't make it too quiet. So you want it just enough so that it doesn't read as if 
straight horizontal line, okay? Okay. All right, so everybody got that? I'm going to look around and just see how everybody is before we move on. All right, so the next step with uh, this is to draw our apple, okay? So again, your apple is either going to be on the right or the left. I've already determined that my apple is going to be on the right side. That's why my construction paper is higher over here on the right side, okay? Now, when you draw your apple, now these are fake apples obviously in front of you, um, but the thing that you have to keep in mind is that even though an apple is round, okay, it's not perfectly round. There's bumps, there's bruises on it, um, there's imperfections on it. So if you want to make it really natural looking, you want to exaggerate those imperfections. So you're not going to just draw a perfect ball on here. It'll look like you have a bouncy ball in your drawing and not an apple. So we want to sort of embrace those imperfections, okay? Now, as far as the size that your apple is going to be, I'm just going to kind of put my hand down here. We're kind of going to do like kind of a fist size apple, okay? We don't want our apple to be too small where it makes it really hard to kind of draw it in there or to paint it in there. And we don't want it to be so huge that it takes up all the space on our canvas. So, um, you know, I would say probably about this size is what we're going to go for, okay? So when you do this, you could do this a couple ways. You can kind of use what you learned on the Still Life project when we drew, uh, drew the, um, uh, the tools. If you want to, you can measure it. If you want to, you can take your ruler, you can measure your apple and just figure out just exactly how tall it is. Um, but I'm just going to go for it. So what I'm going to do, because I want my apple to be about this big, and I want the apple, it's going to go above the edge of the construction paper, and the bottom part is going to be below the top there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make a fist where I want the apple to go, and I'm going to draw sort of a mark right here and a mark right here where I want this apple. I don't like that. There we go. That's better. So about a fist. So you kind of take about a fist. So I made those two marks right there. That's kind of that represents the top and the bottom of my apple. So I'm just going to draw a fist, sort of height. So I've got a bark above my construction paper line and I have a mark below it to represent the bottom of my apple. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start drawing the apple at the bottom, okay? I'm going to try to kind of lighten up this mark right here just so it doesn't get in my way. I'll mark, I'll lighten up this one also too so it doesn't get in my way. So I'm going to start at the very bottom of the apple. Again, the apple is not a perfect circle, so if I even look at the bottom of the apple, it's a bit bumpy. Now, if you're not too confident in your abilities to draw an apple, you know, by all means, just watch what I'm doing up here. And you can kind of mimic what I've got here. So I'm just going to start drawing sort of the bottom of this, and then I am going to then slowly make my way up the sides. And when I do this, Again, I'm going to embrace these imperfections. So when I look at the apple, it's not really even that round. It's sort of like a series of um, sort of angles. So I'm just going to kind of draw these in like this and just slowly make my way up to the top of the apple. And you guys can go ahead and start drawing this also too. And then I like to take an eraser and just kind of go in and just kind of cut into the shape to kind of per, just perfect it a little bit more. And I can even continue to adjust sort of this form as I paint it in. And 
And what I'm going to do after I get sort of that first side done, I'll start now going up and around to the other side. And again, an apple's not symmetrical, so it's not going to be the same on both sides. So the form is going to look different. So this is just an initial start to my drawing, and then after I kind of get around here, I'll fix it up. I never expect it to be right the first time that I draw it. And then again, after I kind of get that initially drawn in, I'll take an eraser, I'll kind of clean this up around the outside edge, I'll go in and fix any of the form that I think needs to be adjusted. And again, it's not going to be a, a perfectly symmetrical form. If you make it too perfect, it's going to look, it's going to look really fake. And even though we are drawing and painting fake apples here, we want to try to fool our viewers thinking that we had real apples sitting here. So I basically have the entire outside of my apple drawn on here. I'll give you guys a few minutes to kind of get that, and then I'll show you how to do the uh, top and the stem. All right, so again, just make sure, guys, that you have your apple large enough. You can kind of get an idea of the scale of my apple versus the size of the board. Uh, you don't want your apple to be too small because if it's too small, it's going to make it really hard for you to paint that apple um, because that's the main part of your project. And so that's going to be uh, a big part of your grade is just that apple itself. So if it's too small and you don't have enough room to really show what you need to show, it could cause uh, some problems when it gets graded. So make sure it's big enough. Okay. So basically what I have is I have the very bottom, the very top, and I have my two sides. But what I'm missing is that dimple at the top and where the stem comes out. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to draw that. All right. So when you draw that, it's not going to be all the way up here at the top. So if you notice, I'm about right here on my apple. So what I would do is everybody right now, put your pencil about in the same spot on your apple that I have mine. Okay, I'm not in the middle. I'm not at the very top. I'm about just right there at the top fourth mark, I'd say. Okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw what we kind of refer to as sort of a wacky smile. So it just looks like a smile, just like that, right at the top of your apple. Okay? It's going to look like a smile. And notice how it's not connected. That smile is just right here at the top. It's not connected to this outside edge here or here. Okay, I did not draw it all the way to the edge. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw your stem. Now the stem again, it's the same thing as the apple. It's not going to be a perfect cylinder or like a rectangular shape. It's supposed to look natural, and natural things have a lot of imperfections on them. So take a look at your stem. What I notice on mine sitting in front of me is that it's actually thinner here at the base, and it gets thicker up here at the top. And then my stem, it actually stops, it stops right above the top edge of my apple. So I need to stop it about right here, okay? So it goes past the edge of my apple. Look at yours. Your stem might not go past the back edge of your apple, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and draw this. Again, I need to make sure I make it thinner here at the base, and it kind of gets a little bit wider and a little bit chunkier here at the top of it. And then I'm just going to make it thin here at the top or at the bottom. And again, I need to make sure that mine ends above that top edge of the apple. You get that. 
Okay? So there's my stem. So now you guys can draw your stem. Work on that kind of wacky smile for that dimple at the top. And then we'll talk about what's next. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, painting this um, uh, construction paper. So, you know, you're going to get your container out. And so I'm going to take the tape off of this, okay, so they're not attached. So you still have your two plates, okay. Um, as we go through this uh, painting, you want to try to keep all your paint piles on one plate, and then you can use that second plate just for mixing colors. Uh, you don't want piles on it because that second plate is going to be the one that's going to be put on top of there, and you don't want those piles to just kind of drop down, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit of paint here. Don't need too much because I still have some left over from the other day. Um, if your paint piles dry up a little bit, a lot of times all that it is is just there's going to be like a little film, dry film on the top. And if you break that open, you'll have wet paint on the inside. So at any point, so at any point of the project, um, while you guys are working on it, if you need a little bit more paint, just you can come up and get paint yourself. Uh, but remember, you just need a little bit. You can always come back and get more. Okay. So I have my brush. Make sure that you take that cap off and you put that in your Ziploc bag. Okay. So go ahead and take the cap off, put it in your Ziploc bag so you don't lose that because that's when it, what's going to kind of keep your brush looking nice and neat while you're working on it. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do, you should make sure to, you have a bucket of water and you have your paper towel. Okay, so have your paper towel with you. So when we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're basically going to make a value scale. Okay, so if you think about the value scale you did on your worksheet, okay, we went from white to the darkest uh, color we could get, which is black. You're just using white, blue, and black. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically make this look like a value scale, but this time it's going to be gradated, so it's all going to blend together, okay? So we're going to start with our lightest, and we're going to go to our darkest, but first what you have to do is you have to look at your still life that's sitting in front of you and ask yourself, is your light coming from your right side or is it coming from your left side, okay? So look at it right now. You can even look up to see which light is pointing towards your table. Is it hitting your apple from the right or from the left? Now, for my project, my light is hitting my apple here at the right side. Okay? So my light's hitting the right. Yours might be different. It may be coming from the left side. But you all need to look so you can see which way it's going because that's going to determine where your light and dark is going to be. So mine is going to go from light blue to dark blue over here towards the left. So it's actually going to be kind of opposite of what I did on the color wheel worksheet. Okay? So does everybody know which way your light's coming from? Okay. So what we're going to do first, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a couple scoops of my white. So I'm not going to make my lightest color white. I'm actually going to make it a light blue. So I'm going to start with about three scoops of white. Okay. So I took, again, my paint from the outside of my paint pile. So take three scoops from the outside edge of your white paint pile and make a new pile. And then what I'm going to do, and remember, you're always going to start when you're mixing colors, you start with your lightest color and you add your darker to the lighter. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to get a little dot. And when I mean dot, I'm mean just a little dot of blue on the tip of my brush right there. And I'm going to mix it in with my white. Now it's kind of hard to see just because we have the lights on in here. But I've got just a very pale blue right now. I actually think this is a little too light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. I'm going to get another dot of this blue, just a small dot, and mix this in here.
That's much better. Okay, so I've got my light mixed up here. So what I want to do is I want to make another pile here, and I'm going to kind of make like a medium value, okay? So when I start this, I'm going to start with less white. So before I started with like three scoops of white, uh, this time I'm only going to start with two. And again, I haven't cleaned off my brush yet. And because of that, it's important to make sure that I'm taking my paint from the outside edge of that white paint pile. So I'm going to take two scoops of white. And I'm just going to go ahead and mix what I have on my brush in there just to see what I've got because I've already got some blue on my paintbrush. And so now what I'm going to do after I kind of wipe that off, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some blue. This time I'm going to get more blue because I want this to be darker. So I'm going to start with just one scoop here or one dot. And I'm going to keep adding just a small dot of blue until I can get what I would consider to be like a medium blue. So this time I'm grabbing a little bit more. So this is like my second kind of dot here. And it's starting to look darker. And I'm going to grab probably one more. And I'm doing this right next to that light blue pile that I made because I just want to make sure that they are different. Okay. Now my next blue like tint or shade, whatever way you want to look at it, is going to be just the straight blue, so I don't need to mix that. So I've got a light, I have a medium, and I've got what I would consider right now my darkest, just the straight blue. So if I want to, I, I can make a separate pile, and I probably will. I'll just make a separate pile right here, so it's all kind of close together. And I do still have uh, some white on my brush, so I'll just mix that in. And that'll be sort of my darker one for now. So I'm going to wash my brush off at this point. So get yourself to a point where you feel like you have three really good different uh, tints of blue. I have a light, I have a medium, and I have a darker one. And remember, when you wash that brush off, Squeeze all that water out of your brush. You don't want to have a ton of water in your brush because that's going to thin out your paint. Okay? So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to work on those tents, and then I'll show you how to apply them. Okay, so I'm going to put these up here again. And again, it's kind of hard to really see those colors very well just because the lights are off and spotlights are on in the classroom. But as long as you have three dis very distinctively different uh, tents here, you should be fine. Um, like I was saying, kind of as I, I was walking around, um, it's easy to actually edit and change these tents as you're painting along. Um, so like, for example, if I paint this white or this lightest value down and I figure out it needs to be a little bit lighter on my painting, if my painting's still wet, I can go ahead and add just straight white directly on top of the canvas and actually kind of paint it on and mix it at the same time. So, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do, because my, um, my uh, light is coming from the right side, okay, so it's going to be lightest here, and it's going to go from light to dark going this way towards the left. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to kind of get rid of or just clean up um, that mark that I originally made to mark the midway point because even though acrylic paint is an opaque paint, if I'm, I can't really use a lighter paint color to cover up those pencil lines too well. So I'm going to just erase those pencil lines that I don't need, but I'm going to keep my lines for my apple and my construction paper. 
And then what I'm going to do, okay, when I start painting this, I'm going to actually put my canvas at an angle here, okay? So when, I br when I'm brushing on this paint, okay, just to kind of give you an idea, I am going to be, and I'm not going to paint it on right now, I'm going to be painting my um, color down and like at an angle. So I'm not going to be painting it straight up and down like this, going like a value scale like that. I'm actually going to angle it, okay? So every time I add like a new color or paint it down, I am going to be going across like this, okay, at an angle. And that's just going to help give um, it a little bit more dimension. And I'm not going to be so picky about um, getting rid of my brush marks like I was on my color wheel because I'm actually going to take advantage of the paint marks that the brush makes to help me just describe space, okay? So I'm going to start by just getting some of this lighter value down. And again, I'm going to paint it down at an angle. And when I get close to the apple, I am going to kind of slow it down just so I don't paint over that. And again, notice how I am painting at an angle. I'm going to kind of zoom this in a little bit. Now, if you run out of paint, all you need to do is just mix some more. If you're light on the other side... You're going to start on the other side then. Yeah. So if your lightest area is over here on the left, you guys should be starting here on the left at an angle and basically doing the opposite of what I'm doing. If your light is over here on the right like mine, you should be doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing. So I'm just going to take, keep painting this edge. Let me zoom out just a little bit more. Now what you can do too, if it's more comfortable for you, you can put your canvas in your hand and just hold it in your hand. Paint it down like this going to be kind of hard to show. And I'm going to actually take this uh, lighter value a little bit farther than what I think it needs to be. And if you notice, you see how, like, when I'm ending it, this might be a little hard to see. I'm not exactly going for a fully cut, a full coverage here. So I'm just kind of uh, what we would refer to as dry brushing. Brush is really dry with very little paint on it. I'm just kind of like cleaning off my brush and fading it off at the same time. So that's kind of what I have right now. I also need to paint this for me because my light is also hitting behind. I need to put some of this light up here. Same thing, I'm going to kind of clean my brush and fade it off. So I see my light going behind the, the apple also too. <laughs> 
So without washing my brush then, when I'm ready for my medium, which I am, so I've got about that much done, I'm going to go and pick up some of my medium here, my medium sort of like blue, and I'm going to start painting that actually on top of my light to try to start blending it in. So I'm actually overlapping them, trying to mix them, and so that's how you're going to blend. It's just like putting two wet layers of paint on top of each other, and then just take your brush and just kind of blend them in, one on top of the other. I'm already going to need to make some more of my medium here, so I'm going to make some more. I'm probably going to need more than blue than that. And again, whenever I have to <coughs> remix a color, um, especially in a situation like this where I'm kind of going from light to dark, I don't make such a huge deal about getting it to match up perfectly to the shade or tint that I had before. I just want to get close enough uh, because what I'm going to do is I am going to be overlapping these and they'll just blend together anyways. And if you notice, I'm sticking with my angle here. Try to hold this. So again, when I want to kind of fade it out, I just call it cleaning off my brush. <laughs> so you can see how broken it looks. It's not a complete layer. I will fill that in and layer it up with my other value later. So up here in this top, uh, in this corner here, it's kind of hard to see. Let's see, if, oh yeah, you can see. You can see up here, I'm, it's not blending very well on mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and pick up some of my lighter color, and I'm just going to drag it into that medium color to blend it out a little bit more. Because I kind of covered it up a little bit when I went and added my medium. So I'm just going to. add more of my light, and then just blend it out that way. So there we go. So I fixed that. Okay. So I've got my light and my medium started. You can see how I kind of dragged out my medium. I'll drag it out even a little bit more. This will help me blend. And it just kind of helps me also to clean off my brush. Okay. So the next thing for me to do now is to add my darker one on. Okay, and I'm going to blend that in. I'm going to hold this in my hand. I think it's easier to hold it in my hand. And I'm just going to take that again, and I'm going to take it and overlap it, and I'm still following the same 
angle that I've worked with since the very beginning. You can tell, like, when I lay this down, it doesn't look pretty at the beginning. But I just need to get the paint down, and then I'll work with it. So basically what you should see is a value change from left to right, okay? It should resemble a value scale, like what we did on our worksheet. If you notice too, I haven't cleaned off my brush. I really don't need to because I, I want all of these colors to blend, so. And I am going to clean it off now. <laughs> so I've got that. And if you guys look, I've got quite a lot here that I need to blend in. It kind of looks real patchy right there. So again, I'm going to go back with my medium value that I have. And I'm just going to layer it on top while this paint is still wet. I'm going to kind of, let's see here. My water bucket is causing some lighting issues. There we go. So again, make sure to get that water off your brush. So you go back. Oh, grab the water. Take some of my medium value that I have, and I'm going to go just right on top of here, blending it out. And this is stuff that the blending part takes time. This is the part you have to play around with. And so with this particular part, because I'm blending now, um, my medium to my dark, I do, I am washing my brush off. I actually have to mix up some more of my medium. Now I'm just kind of going over with a, just a clean brush, no paint on it, and try to blend that out. I'm just adding some paint on my brush whenever I feel like I need it. And then going back and add my dark when I'm ready for that. Painting is just a big experiment. You, know, you just got to try something to see how it goes. Um, if it needs to be a little lighter, make it a little bit lighter. If it needs to be a little bit darker, make it a little bit darker. <coughs> I 
But we should see, when we get this uh, construction paper painted, we should see right away what direction your light is coming from. So you just want to play with your paint. And see now you can see how I've kind of been working this out here. Just got some canvas I need to make sure I cover up. So do look, uh, sometimes that canvas, you need to give it a couple coats just to make sure you've got all your canvas covered up. Now I am finding that I'm probably making a lot, I'm remaking a lot of my medium than any other color. Um, which kind of makes sense. Because that is a transition between your light and your dark. So keep playing with this. <clears throat> our goal is to be in a really good place with our uh, construction paper. And I'm not, I'm not trying to get rid of my brush marks. I actually want them to kind of stick around because that's going to help. Um, I don't know, it gives it just a, a, an impression of just space and depth and perspective.
So if you got a lot of brush marks, uh, don't let that worry you. I'd keep them. And so this is just what we're going to be working on here. We'll say that sometimes the best thing I think to do too, just when I'm blending, just give you some um, tips on how to blend, is just <clears throat> use a clean brush, no paint on it, and while those edges are wet, just kind of uh, drag your brush over that to, to blend it in. So I'm just using a clean brush and just kind of blending this stuff in as it's wet. No paint on my brush other than what I might be picking up while I'm doing this. If you feel like you're running out of paint and need more paint, feel free to come up and uh, get more. I'm actually going to try to kind of uh, lighten up some of this stuff up here. I'm going to need more paint. So I'm just, um, I felt like I needed to just kind of lighten up um, some areas, so I actually have a little bit of a lighter value than what I actually started off with. So I'm just um, kind of adding that here and just the parts of the construction paper that I feel like should be the brightest and lightest. Just adding that in. Again, if I'm just kind of adding, I'm adding just a little bit right here. Um, and this area that I'm painting in is not wet anymore. So it, makes, it can make blending hard. So what I'm going to do is after I paint down that lighter color that I want, I'm going to clean off my brush, take that water off. I have no paint on my brush, and then I'm just going to kind of feather out that edge and that's how you can blend it when you're working on top of a dry layer. So that's how you can blend when you're working into dry paint.
All right, so I'm probably going to still mess around with that, but that's, you know, a, a pretty good start. Um, I, I, like I said, I'll probably still edit it, but um, that's going to be probably the main thing with just a few um, probably improvements and uh, revisions to it as we go through the painting. But that's how you'll do that. And the next step will be for us to actually paint the background. And then the apple will be last. 